Hey, what's up? Chanel, welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today, we're going to be defending the D-Beat with one of the best bands to ever come out of Sweden. Fucking Disphere. Oh, yeah. Soul Scars. Holy shit. Thank you, Josh. I love Disphere. I can't show you right now. I have an old flyer when they were on relapse after uh well up there is a misanthropic generation promo poster and then i have the live the storm tour poster on my door i saw them on that tour and almost got my face kicked in uh that's when i used to fucking drink and stuff and uh i shouldn't need to explain who disfear are so right now I'm not, but I'm gonna put it this way. If you check out their material, like especially their relapse material, it has Thomas from At The Gates on vocals, and it was before he shot his voice out. And oh my God, it's so fucking good. Like, it's pretty much why I can't enjoy those new At The Gates records. I mean, first off, when it comes to Melodic death metal, I really feel like the last melodic death metal record I actually listened to front to back and enjoyed was Arsis, A Celebration of Guilt. Like seriously, that album, like, I remember it was like, I, I just instantly fell in love with it. I went to the record release show and like, yeah, I just instantly... That was a weird show, too. Like, I think the Red Chord and Rotten Sound played. It, it was it was awesome. <laughs> like, it was, it was a good fucking lineup. But, uh, that was, like, 2003, I think. But, um, that record, it might have been early 2004. I really don't remember off the top of my head. But when it comes to Disphere, if you like metal punk and, you know... Especially if you like the D beat and just Now this is the eternal question, is it metal or is it hardcore? Like it's one of those, like it, it's crusty hardcore, which sometimes is heavier than some metal bands. Like go listen to His Heroes Gone. Go listen to the tragedy, the one tragedy EP with the yellow cover. I'm drawing a blank on the name of it, but that, it, it's like so fucking heavy it's ridiculous. Because, like, they're not technically a metal band. Like, they are and they aren't. I mean, like, Todd's in uh, Nightfell with Tim for Weregoat. I don't know. I'm sure most of you know that. Like, if you listen to Nightfell, that's Todd from Tragedy and shit. Like, and they're one of America's best, like, DB crusty metal hardcore bands the way Disphere is one of Europe's best and that's a bold statement I fucking know like there's tons of like crusty DB bands that you know obviously like we're doing this before Disphere and might even do it better than Disphere it's just like when it comes to crust and stuff, it's been a very long time. Like, honestly, I don't know anything about modern, like, what's going on with, like, crust and shit like that, or any, like, thing. Sometimes I'll stumble across, like, a badass, you know, release. Like, that one time I found that fucking Man is the Bastard Capitalist Casualty split. The time I saw Macabre and they had a split they did with Capitalist Casualties, I had no idea about. Fucking randomly getting uh, that Despise You LP in the mail. 
I should be looking right at it, but of course, I am. And then as soon as this got sent to me, Tank Crimes reissued it. So I was like, oh shit, that's fucking awesome. Because I hit up Tank Crimes, and I was like, do you know anything about this press? Because I really don't know that much about it. And he was like, oh yeah, like, like that's an awesome press. It's, uh, you know. The Spies You don't sound like this fear, but like, you know, they come from a similar, like, just, uh, scene, kind of, but not really at all. I would just say, like, a lot of, you're gonna run into a lot of metal punks liking both bands, I would say. But this shit fucking rips, man. It's like Motorhead playing, like, punk. It's fucking sick, and, you know... Again, like I said, if you don't know Dysphere, they have members that were in certain bands that got certain guitar tones using certain guitar pedals. You should know where I'm going with all this, but like the way that, you know, bands like Dysphere use it, they use it fucking right in my opinion and they do it so well. Like, this is 14 tracks of just total, just crusty madness. I love it. Sphere and Soul Scars. The fact this is from 1995 is just awesome. I just to me is like a fuck you to everything else that was going on. Like you had Green Day Dookie being considered punk rock, like Offspring Smash. Like I, you know, I get it. Like, and this was recorded at um fucking. Sunshine, uh, Sunlight Studios, I'm sorry. In 1995, like, seriously, that boggles my fucking mind, like. And it's great, man. Like, especially with this lineup, like, just... Bjorn's guitar tone is just... It's something that, you know, so many bands try to just capture, and it's just, it's not gonna happen. That's just something that, you know... And I'm, I'm guessing this is a, a bootleg or maybe just a, a reissue on the Grind Ears Records. And I'm just saying that because not only have I never heard of this label, but uh, I don't know. It just, for some reason, reminded me of this, like, Indonesian... Oh, it is from Indonesia! Oh my god! <laughs> that was random. I didn't know that. I just guessed. As I was gonna say, this looks exactly like this one, uh... Fucking, um... Uh, Crown Weights the... Um... Ah, oh, fuck. You know what demo I'm talking about. I'm drawing them. It, yeah, dude... It's a different record label, but it looks the same. Crown Waits the Immortal. Uh, that, I don't know. That just like I, When I first got this, I was like, yo, that looks familiar. Like, yeah, it just has different tape cosmetics. That's crazy. I guess these are the tapes you get in Indonesia. Like, they, I don't, I don't fucking know. That's kind of weird, like, 
I, I, I really didn't know these both were from Indonesia. And this is a reissue from 2020. This Disphere one. So this might be like that label that just did that Boof uh, Demi-Lich reissue. Because it is it is unofficial. Um, I hate to break it to you folks. that Because it is real nice looking. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I think that label is like putting out bootlegs. Because it says on that Metal Encyclopedia site that the Demi Lich release is unofficial. This is official. This is the Extremely Rotten Productions cassette. The Svart LPs over there along with the uh, demo compilation. Which that I wish that would get put out on cassette. Or if Dave at ERP would just like go one by one and put out each Demi Lich demo. But I think doing a compilation like the Spectral Voice Necrotic demos, that would be the best way to go about it. I mean, they do have a lot of demos, so who knows. I, I just have the Echo demo from 92. But, um, yeah, I don't remember what the label's called off the top of my head, but I know it has the, uh, other cover artwork, too, also, if I remember correct. But it's on, like, a white cassette, and, like, it's got, like, blood, like, coming out of it. Like, it's super fancy looking, and I know they just did that, like, picture Gorguts release of Considered Dead. But I, I don't know what the deal is with that label. They're from Peru. They just did a suffocation fucking effigy of the forgotten fucking reissue on cassette. Like, how can I fucking miss that? But if it's a bootleg and it's fucking like, you know, just some CD dub. And with shipping, it's like 38 fucking dollars for a single cassette. So it's kind of gnarly. Like, especially, you know, they're in really limited numbers, too, so that's also super sus, like, very suspect, you know, when there's a label. It would be like if somebody did a reissue of Blood's Impulse to Destroy, like, this is the Wild Rags version, and, uh, like, imagine if they only did 25, but, like, the tape has, you know the cover as its cosmetics that's the buying point like you're not even really buying it for the music you're buying it for the cover i get it i mean like but there are certain labels when they do reissues you know you're getting the real deal like flaga like the solstice self-titled this sounds fucking phenomenal and you get a really nice you know j card same with, like, Corpse Gristle. They don't fuck around. Like, their reissues sound amazing. And, again, like, I know some of you care about cassette cosmetics. And I, I, I get it. Especially if you collect stuff. Because the Discord, like, this is, you know, really, really sick. Even if you're, like, not a Discord fan. But, like, this sounds amazing. And, like, I, you know that the band's cool with it. And it's the same with, like, the Parasitic reissue of Forensic. Like, you know, real... Like, sometimes you could just tell, like, real deal reissues and stuff compared to Boof ones. Because I got... Got... <laughs> when it came to my Demi Lich demo. I was all excited. And, you know, it still has the tunes on it. And it has all the cosmetics, but it's just a Model 77 Pro Tape with the tunes recorded to it. So, for the cost of this, which was $15, this guy probably got 25 cassettes for like 10 So, he made a killing off this. And you can just tell it's not original based off of how... Unless this guy kept this in, like, some ice chamber or something. Like, the font is, like, fresh. You can just kind of tell. 
But as soon as I saw the Model 77, I was like, oh, motherfucker. Like, I'm pretty sure they didn't have Model 77 Pro tapes back in 1992, you know? But I don't know, though. They could have. And I could be dead wrong. I hope I am, but I'm probably not. And then you have, you know, like the Cyanide Kills demo from Caustic Cassettes, just keeping it fucking classic. Keeping it the way it was meant to originally be. Again, like, just nothing but respect with that type of stuff. As long as I know, like, because if you're reissuing something and it's under a hundred copies, again, normally to me, that's suspect. It's like, all right, why are you only doing like a, like that many? Like you could sell so many of these. And like, sometimes I get it cause it's a smaller label and, but I also know how much blank tapes are. I know how much, you know, if you want to hand duplicate something or, Pro duplicate something like when it comes to bootlegs, I'm guessing hand duplication would be the easiest route to to go. But a lot of people, you know, when it comes to like LPs, I really do understand like people being like, "Yo, like that's a bootleg. Like, don't get that compared to this." Like, you know, because sound quality, something like you don't want some like. LP that's pretty much a CD ripped on to wax. Like, because it's gonna 99% sound like dog shit. It's like when you get a glow-in-the-dark LP, you're taking a risk with sound quality over how something looks. And again, that's your decision. I have a glow-in-the-dark glow worm-ridden LP. I mean, I didn't ask for it, but like... Hey, it's glow in the dark, but it sounds fine to me. It's the same with picture discs. I personally have never had a problem with like picture discs. Every picture disc I have is like very high quality and just sounds great. But I got really off topic. We're talking about the defenders of the DB Disphere, Sweden's best with soul scars. 1995 crusty metallic hardcore, I guess. It's not metalcore, it's metal punk, but it's super crusty, super pissed off, and I fucking love it. This is better than most metal, like straight up metal bands, like when it comes to heaviness, songwriting, and that Swedish buzzsaw sound. A lot of you worship this fear. Do it better than ninety nine percent of bands that fuck with that tone. That's what I was saying. Like, just wait till you hear like the the guitar on here. Legit rips like a fucking chainsaw. And it's you know not in like a way like hey we're trying to be old school in a way that's like yo this sounds fucking heavy right like no boof disfear soul scars 1995 swedish crust awesomeness Again, like, when it comes to, like, crusty metal, I never know what to really call it. Like, because there's... I mean, I'm sure there's, like, a legit term, but, like, I know Disphere go by Defenders of the D-Beat, and yes, they do a great job at defending the D-Beat. And if you ever get a chance to see them li live, wear earplugs. They are loud as fuck, but amazing. But, as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Disfear, Soul Scars. I mean, Disfear is one of those bands I feel like doesn't have anything bad in their discography. So, I'm being kind of biased here by giving this a 10 out of 10. Because I fucking love this band. But, I hope you do too. And I really, really hope you go and check out their material from the 2000s on relapse before relapse just went 
Meow. But anyways, as always, thanks for watching. Hails.